Let me start with your outlook for this year uh, and what you're expecting to see. Can you give us a sense of how much uncertainty there is attached to the guidance you're giving, the assumptions you're making about the COVID path from here? Because you're having to, to make a lot of assumptions about your diagnostic business, which will have an impact. So how much uncertainty is there here? For our guidance, for our outlook for the current year, we assume that the pandemic will slow down in the second quarter and hence we have a negative uh, development for our COVID-related sales. But I should also say there is still a lot of uncertainty around that. Uh, uh, you know, at the beginning of last year, uh, we expected our sales to grow low single digit and we ended up with a 9% growth and a lot of that was driven uh, by COVID which we got wrong. Uh, I remember still in uh, mid of last year, I was predicting that the pandemic would come down in the second half, which didn't happen. We, we then saw Delta and Omicron. So there is a lot of uncertainty around uh, COVID. But uh, again, our assumption is that it will now finally slow down in the second quarter of that year. Uh, what I should say is that the underlying growth of our uh, new medicines, of our base business is very strong and is in the high single digits. Good morning, Severin. Up until late last year, Novartis owned a large part of your company and Roche repurchased those shares at the end of last year. Now that the kind of dust has settled in that deal, what does this mean for your change in strategy? What advantages is it opening up? You know, what can you now exploit with that new freedom or that severation of those ties of your, those two big companies? Actually, it doesn't have um, any impact on our strategy or our daily operations. Uh, as you know, uh, the majority of the shares was um, already owned by the founding uh, families. Uh, so that with uh, the repurchase of, of the shares, uh, we have a technical impact. We have an accretion effect uh, because we have less shares now. Uh, but um, there is no, uh, no uh, significant impact uh, of any kind on our strategy or our operations. Let, let me just ask you a little more about the, the, the interesting comments you're making this morning about COVID, uh, Severan, and your assumptions on that front. Uh, you previously talked about facing unprecedented challenges in terms of the demand for COVID tests. You've given updated guidance on how you expect those, those test uh, demand stories to develop for the different types of tests. Are you still facing those challenges? And if so, what are they? Getting hold of the right materials and the like? Or is that, is that fading away, that pressure? There is still uh, a very high demand uh, for diagnostic tests as we speak. Uh, uh, actually, the demand is, is currently higher than the uh, supply. Um, and uh, that is very much driven by the latest uh, Omicron wave. Uh, what I should also say is that Roche is very well positioned here because in addition uh, to the high demand for tests and instruments, another bottleneck is actually personnel. So many labs are uh, literally not able to perform the tests because of a lack of personnel. And we um, are the company with the most automated systems uh, and that gives us an advantage, a competitive advantage and that helps labs uh, to have a higher throughput of, of tests. Uh, but the demand continues to be very strong and we see a very uh, strong demand uh, I'd say for the first quarter. Uh, then our assumption is that, that it will uh, slow down uh, but for the time being demand is very high. Severin, what's your kind of view on how COVID testing evolves? I know you think the demand for it will subside maybe after the second quarter, um, but you know, do you think that the next step in COVID testing, as it becomes endemic in the years ahead, even if it becomes lower demand, is it going to be a different type of test? Is it going to be a greater specificity, specificity about what kind of variant we have? Is it going to be greater speed? Is it going to be lower cost? What's the next revolution in COVID testing? Uh, I, I uh, firmly believe that the coronavirus will stay with us. Uh, so it will um, evolve from a pandemic uh, state into an endemic state. And as such, there will be continued need uh, for uh, diagnostic uh, tests in this area. And we will keep developing uh, 
uh, new and, and, and better uh, tests. I should say, however, um, that um, already today uh, we have highly sensitive, highly specific tests and we have tests which uh, actually identify all the different variants of, of, of the virus. Mm. Now, as the virus evolves, uh, we might have to adapt our tests and we will certainly do this uh, as we did in the past. Can I ask you about something else that investors no doubt are considering, and that is the potential of one of your Alzheimer's or your Alzheimer's therapy, uh, gantanerumab. What is, the, what is the time horizon around that, Severan? I know you're in conversations with, with US regulators. And, and what expectation do you have? We expect our so-called phase three trials, our pivotal trials, to read out towards the end of this year. Uh, and then we will have, whatever the result is, we will have a definitive answer uh, of whether we can uh, bring uh, 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 a new medicine in this devastating uh, disease. So stay tuned. Uh, but we will only know by the end of this year.